today I've got a nice problem from a 1972 German math Olympiad. And our goal is to find all natural numbers m and n such that the arithmetic mean of m and n is a two-digit number a, b, so those are the two digits, and the geometric mean of m and n is the two-digit number b, a. So in other words, the geometric mean of these two numbers is just the same as the arithmetic mean with the digits switched. So I think that's kind of a cute little problem. Let's see how the solution goes. So let's first note that the arithmetic mean is m plus n over 2. So we know m plus n over 2 is 10a plus b. Because when we use this digit notation, a, b with an overline, that means the tens digit is a and the ones digit is b. And built into this is the fact that a is a number from 1 to 9, and B is also a number from 1 to 9. And you might say, well, what about 0? But since these are both two-digit numbers, A and B cannot be 0. Because if A was 0, this would only be a one-digit number. And if B was 0, this would only be a one-digit number. But we're supposing they are both two-digit numbers. Okay, so we know that the arithmetic mean is 10a plus b, and then we know the geometric mean, which is the square root of mn, is equal to 10b plus a. Great. And before we get going with any sort of calculation, we know something about the sizes of the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean. Formally, we know the arithmetic geometric mean inequality. So we know the arithmetic mean is larger than or equal to the geometric mean. But in terms of a and b, that means 10a plus b is bigger than or equal to 10b plus a, but that means that a is bigger than or equal to b. So that's a good first piece of information to keep in mind. Okay, so next up what we'll do is take these two equations and write them kind of in a simpler form. Well, maybe not simpler on the right-hand side, but simpler on the left-hand side so that we can end up solving for m and n in terms of a and b. Okay, so we know m plus n is equal to 20a plus 2b, just multiplying that first equation by 2. And then we know m times n is 100b squared plus 20ab plus a squared. And that's from squaring that binomial right there. Okay, but now we've got a system of two equations, but it's a nonlinear system of equations, but it's kind of a nice nonlinear system of equations. Notice we can take this second equation and maybe solve for n and plug that into the first equation, giving us a quadratic. Okay, so solving this for n, we will have n equals 1 over m times the quantity 100b squared plus 20ab plus a squared. Okay, nice. Now, like I said, we can take this expression for n and loop it into this sum formula. And what will that give us? Well, let's see. We'll have m plus 1 over m times all of this stuff. So that's 100b squared plus 20ab plus a squared equals 20a plus 2b. Nice. So next up, maybe we would like to multiply both sides of this equation by m. So let's see, that's going to change this to an m squared plus, well, really the number 1 times that. And then all of this over here will be multiplied by m. Now we have a quadratic equation that we can solve for m. Let's rewrite it a little bit. We have m squared minus... 20a plus 2b times m plus 100b squared plus 20ab plus a squared equals 0. So we have something like that. So now we can solve for m using the quadratic formula. So this is where we left off. 
we had this equation for m plus n. We decided that a was bigger than or equal to b using the arithmetic geometric mean inequality, and we got this quadratic equation for m. Now we can use the quadratic formula to solve for m. So m will be negative the coefficient of m in the quadratic equation, so that'll be 20a plus 2b plus minus the square root of, we have this stuff squared, that's going to be 400a squared plus 80ab plus 4b squared. So like I said, that's this squared minus four times this constant term times the coefficient of m squared, but that's just one. So that means we're going to subtract just four times this. So that'll be 400b squared minus 80ab minus 4a squared. Okay, nice. And now this is all over 2. So I'm going to put this over 2, but I'll enlarge it, but I'll enlarge in this radical and bring the 2 inside of it where it becomes a 4. Okay, so let's see what that leads us with. We have m equals, so 10a plus b plus minus the square root of, let's see what simplification occurs. So this 80ab will cancel this 80ab. And then this 400 will cancel down to a 4. This 4 will cancel down to a 1. And then simplifying will leave us with 99a squared. And similarly, we'll have minus 99b squared. So that's what we have for m. But in order for m to be a natural number, which is one of our assumptions over here, that tells us that the inside of this radical is a perfect square. So in other words, 3 squared times 11 times a minus b times a plus b is a square. Great. So notice I factored the 99 out, and then I factored it like 3 squared times 11. And then I factored the a squared minus b squared into a minus b times a plus b. But 3 is already squared, so that doesn't actually give us much information. We have a single factor of 11 here. That means we have to pick up another factor, 11, a factor of 11 among these two terms. So in other words, we have a minus b times a plus b is a multiple of 11. And that's based on the requirement that we have to pick up a second multiple of 11 to make this thing a perfect square. Okay, but now since a and b come from the set 1 to 9, that tells us that we have two possibilities. a could be equal to b. So that would be the case when a minus b is a multiple of 11. Well, obviously, if we did not have this restriction, we could have lots of cases when a minus b was a multiple of 11, but we can't take anything from this set, subtract those two terms, and get a multiple of 11 until they're the same. Or we have a plus b is a multiple of 11, but if we take two elements from this set and take the requirement that their sum is a multiple of 11, then that multiple of 11 has to be 11 itself because the next multiple of 11 is 22, but you can't take two elements from the set, sum them, and get 22 or 33 or so on and so forth. So that leaves us with the following two possibilities. So here's some of the important data that we've come up with. So we had m was this expression involving a and b, involving that square root. The fact that 3 squared times 11 times a squared minus b squared must be a perfect square came from the fact that the interior of the square root has to be a perfect square for m to be a natural number. But this being a perfect square implies that a squared minus b squared over 11 is a square. And that'll actually be our tester for if things work or not. And we get that just from setting this equal to a perfect square and then noticing that 3 squared is already a perfect square. So that's not really adding anything. Furthermore, we came up with the following cases based off of all of these restrictions, and that's a equals b or a plus b equals 11. So let's look at this case first when a equals b. 
So notice if a is equal to b, this square root totally cancels and we get m is equal to 10a plus 10, 10a plus a. So in other words, it is the two digit number aa. But we also know that m plus n is 20a plus 2b. So that tells us that n is also the two digit number aa. So that gives us, let's see, nine total solutions, which would be 11, 22, 33, 44, and so on and so forth, up to 99. So these are the possible solutions for m and n, where m and n are the same in this case. Notice here we have m and n are the same. And then that brings us to our second case, where the sum of a and b is equal to 11. Recall that we know that a is bigger than or equal to b, so that provides us with an additional restriction. So let's work this down in some subcases. So our first subcase will be what happens if a is equal to 9 and then b is equal to 2. Recall that a and b have to be between 1 and 9. So we'll use this right here as our tester for if this works. So let's calculate a squared minus b squared over 11. So notice that'll be 81 minus 4, which is 77, over 11, which is 7. But 7 is clearly not a perfect square, so that means this does not provide us with a solution. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So that'll be A equals 8, and then B equals 3. So our tester expression in this case, A squared minus B squared over 11, turns into 64 minus 9, which is 55 over 11, which is equal to 5. Again, not a perfect square. So we move on to the next case where we have A is equal to 7, B is equal to 4. So that gives us A squared minus B squared over 11 has the form 49 minus 16 over 11. That's going to be 33 over 11, which is equal to 3. Again, not a perfect square. So we have one last hope, and that would be the case when a is equal to 6 and b is equal to 5. And in that case, we'll get a squared minus b squared over 11. That's going to be 36 minus 25, which is 11. 11 over 11, which is the number 1. But 1 is a perfect square, so that works. But now, plugging this value but plugging these two values for a and b into our expression for m up here and doing a little bit of a calculation, we'll see that one case would be m equals 98, which corresponds to n equals 32, and the other case would be m equals 32, which, like you might guess, corresponds to n equals 98. So those would be our two additional solutions. So we have these kind of trivial solutions, which are when the numbers are just multiples of 11, and then we have these kind of more interesting solutions here. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.